Okay, thank you very much. Um, you might not believe me, but uh, I really like my job as a lawyer. <laughs> but um, I get quite frustrated if I have to talk about law to people uh, involved in uh, open science. So I, today I tried to get a bit more of this frustration and I tried to make this presentation a bit more fun. And I got inspired to, um, to the, the, the title and, the, the, and, and what follows by a person called Chris uh, Tyler, who is uh, a member of Dataset mailing list. And w when we were discussing with uh, Marta the licensing policy for our uh, open data repository, Marta asked at that mailing list about uh, their view on uh, how um, what license to choose for the data set as a whole as compared to the licenses for the individual <coughs> elements for the, uh, for the data set. And, that's, uh, and, and the, the, that person said, well, why bother? Because the convoy sails with the speed of the slowest ship anyway. Um, and uh, I think it's really um, interesting to follow that uh, analogy. Well, as we know, convoys were set up, if you are a fan of uh, naval war um, uh, world's history, convoys were set up recently in, uh, in, uh, during the Second World War uh, for a specific reason. There was a need to deliver uh, important supplies for, uh, uh, for, for to, to distant places over the world, and the convoys had to address a uh, problem which was uh, a threat of uh, U-boats. Actually, this is not a, a U-boat captain, it's a captain of some uh, American submarine, which posed a similar threat to the other side, on the other side of the, uh, of the world. Uh, so, um, and this resulted in a whole um, complex um, organization of uh, convoys and, and their escorts and uh, the, this whole enterprise had to uh, sail from point A to point B um, uh, uh, while avoiding uh, any hostile attacks. Um, and at the same time, while following this simple but uh, principle, um, uh, primary principle, that the whole convoy had to sail at the, at the speed of the slowest uh, slowest uh, ship in, in that uh, convoy. Um, and this is actually, um, and, 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 and to add to it, the, the, the whole convoy uh, had to also manage the, the, all those individual uh, ships that were um, uh, part of it, as well as to, there, was, there had to be someone who managed the, the convoy as a whole. And you can use this analogy very uh, uh, very well to discuss uh, rights uh, uh, which, which intermingle in a data set. Because in a data set you can also have very different elements which have, which have different owners and you can have a separate owner of a data set as a whole. Not only you can have separate owners but you can have separate rights which uh, are attached to all those different Elements. So, for example, some of the elements of a data set can be copyrighted. Let's say I have a data set of photographs, or some video recordings, or some interviews with my um, uh, uh, surveyed uh, people. Uh, these might be copyrighted. Those uh, photographs or those interviews might have some privacy, privacy issues involved. Uh, I might try to use some data coming from the uh, public sector uh, resources in, uh, in my research and this also requires me to take into account the, result, uh, the requirement for, uh, for, for reuse of public sector information. And the whole data set that I created during my research can also be subject to some separate rights which are uh, which lawyers love to call sui generis, um, which actually doesn't mean much unless you uh, know that these rights come from a separate directive, which is, which dates um, as long as uh, to 1996, when the European 
uh, communities uh, decided that we need a separate exclusive a set of exclusive rights which attach not only to which attach additionally to uh, rights which might attach to elements elements of some data set but the separate rights separate rights which attach to uh, to uh, data set as a whole um, not only uh, in case where and this, such a data set can be can be thus protected not only if it's creative creatively collected assembled and so on but also if it's not creative but it's um, but it's um, a result of some substantial investment which has been which has been put to the uh, for example collection of the uh, of the data regardless of any protection copyright protection or other protection that might uh, attach to data set or, or the elements um, from the point of view of a person who would like to use such a data set it means that uh, you have to look for to another directive and a, and a separate set of implementations uh, in the search for the question uh, how it's possible to use such a data set and, uh, and separate elements so we have uh, directive 20, uh, 20 um, 2021-29, uh, which covers copyright in the di digital age and so-called limitations and exceptions which allow under certain conditions to use uh, copyrighted works and we have a separate, co um, let's say, uh, exceptions and limitations of the sui generis right uh, in uh, Directive 96-9, um, which do not often, uh, do not all, all the time match. Um, which means that uh, you might end up with a big set of data which you can't really use or you can use in a very limited, uh, in a very limited way. Okay, enough uh, about sui generis, uh, because this is just an uh, illustration of a bigger problem, which is IPRs as a uh, in in general. Um, and in the reminder of my time, I'd like to. Um, at least try to come up with a, a draft solution to this uh, problem. Well, okay, so imagine we have this researcher who compiled a data set and would like to share this uh, data with uh, some other researcher. So obviously, uh, if uh, I was to advise, I would say that, uh, first of all, you have to really think what are the rights involved in this whole data set. Uh, if there are any which are not yours, you have to identify the owners and you have to think whether you have to negotiate with those owners to uh, whether they have to allow for, for certain use or not uh, or not because you might fall, fall under uh, one or two, hopefully maybe more exceptions or limitations which are covered in uh, respective uh, laws and you have to also identify those, those, uh, those laws and probably your lawyer might help you. But from the point of view of the other researcher who would like to use this data set, actually he has to follow the same procedure. Because even though the, the rights were cleared on the uh, left side, uh, this might not mean that uh, all this clearance really applies to all the activities which are contemplated by the by the by the user might the rights might have been cleared only to the extent which was necessary for the uh, for the left researcher uh, to uh, to publish the data or to, to to use the data the other research might be completely different in scope in application and so on and might not fall under the same limitations and and so on so obviously well okay you can have good uh, good metadata attached to, to the data set and, and individual elements, but they might not, uh, they might not cover all um, information which, which is necessary for all users to freely reuse the, the data. And I think it's, it's, a, it's, it's a good point to remind ourselves that if we talk about open data, we talk about data which is free, freely reusable, not just accessible, but freely, freely re reusable to, uh, to everyone. But still, if you want to go to this, uh, into, this, into this journey, uh, you, mm, you, you might at least try to get some 
apart from doing your research, in parallel to doing your research, try to um, gather as much documenta documentation about the data you collect so that you can share as much uh, of this information about rights and their limitations for, uh, to, with, with all uh, prospective users of your data. And it's not that we are inventing the wheel here. The topic is, is uh, already well known. Uh, in Horizon 2020, there are spe specific guidelines for those research projects that would like to uh, contribute their data to data pilot, uh, which boils down to uh, having information, let's say information policy, and in particular drafting a data management plan, which requires that you answer all those uh, questions and prepare some metadata and some documentation um, to, your, to your data. Uh, to your data, meaning the data set as a whole, but also to all individual elements of your data set. Uh, and uh, to just give you an example, I tried to recreate such a process with regard to my presentation, and in order to make it as more close to what the casual researcher would do, I did it not beforehand, but uh, only today in the morning, just before the release of my small data set, which means that I had very small time and I obviously failed to do it properly, because what I was only able to do in the morning, I was only able to gather, gather some screenshots of the uh, web pages where I found all those uh, pictures that I showed you, uh, and I managed only to do a very rough legal analysis whether they are okay to be published here or not. So for example here we have some photo from uh, Canadian uh, archives which I believe is some kind of a government work which is not covered by, by copyright. The same goes to uh, this uh, war poster and probably also to this uh, photograph taken on board of a USS submarine, obviously a government um, uh, object. Um, well, with this one, I'm not. Uh, I'm not very sure. Maybe this is not copyrighted at all because we have some rough diagram of a typical convoy. So maybe there is no creativity involved in this picture, and I, I, uh, I could use it without uh, problems. Uh, fortunately, those nice icons are uh, copyrighted by a friend of mine at ICM, and he made it for my own um, at my own uh, request. Uh, well, here it gets more. Uh, more and more complicated because, well, okay, I could probably quote part of this movie just to uh, illustrate how um, how how um, uh, uh, hard journey we're uh, um, uh, traveling uh, in order to get the data cleared. But I wasn't able to find who is the author of this particular um, photo from the movie and how to attribute him. Uh, with this, it goes even more complicated because, well, okay, okay, we know uh, the movies that those uh, pictures were taken from, but this is actually the, the picture of this lady. I really don't know uh, where it comes from, and the internet really doesn't help me to get the proper proper uh, ownership. Um, so. Um, I think, I hope you just get the rough idea how uh, data um, uh, data managing, uh, how hard could it be. Um, and, uh, but also I, I hope I did not scare you um, uh, too much to, to, to still um, think about open data as a, as a, reasonable, uh, a reasonable goal. Um, so, thank you. Um, I don't think we... Uh, do we have time for any questions? We have time for one mm -hmm. question. Okay, so one question. Yes? I have a concern because you mentioned that uh, the free data is the data that which is free and freely reusable. And I have a concern that if you even have a permission, uh, this is a bit later, so, uh, if you have a permission of all, all owners of the data, so it's protected by uh, the Data Act, uh, they say you can use it freely, 
and we're distributed also uh, regarding uh, copyright uh, protection. You, you also have a permissions of license, so free license. If you apply the intellectual filter to filter the data in some non-trivial way by the copyright um, article, it becomes a novel right. So I think that might be a pro problematic to reuse uh, the data. How would you address this? Mm -hmm. Because you have the article in the copyright that if you, even if the data is not uh, copyrighted, not protected at all, uh, if you filter it in a non-trivial way, it becomes a novel uh, copyrighted entity. Mm -hmm. um. Yes, uh, and this is actually a practical issue because we often have uh, come across databases of public domain works uh, which are uh, copyrighted or which are uh, or, or towards which are the sui generis rights are uh, involved. And uh, as you as you said, if I make a creative collection of works which are in public domain or under free or um, open licenses, the collection itself might be subject to my exclusive rights. And, well, there is some solution if uh, that person who, um, who owns this new right wants to share the data because that person might use either CC0 or other some, or the standard copyright uh, free, uh, either st uh, other standard uh, free license. <coughs> But the problem is when they don't, they don't, either because they don't know or they don't want to. Uh, and uh, in that case, we are really sailing at the speed of the slowest um, um, ship, or we try to bypass this new law in some way. So, for example, we could extract the public domain, domain works from this database, but still, if we, again, uh, if we again come to the sui generis right, it protects against uh, ex, um, uh, taking from the database some material part of it. So you really, can, if in, even if they are public domain works in, a, in such a database, you cannot take a material part out of it, and you only have to rely then on, either on a consent, you have to contact that person, or you really have to find an exception in the law which allows you to, to use this data. Hopefully there are some exceptions which, which cover science, it's not that bad, but those exceptions are differently implemented in different member states, there are some, of course, legal discussion whether their scope is bigger or narrower. So there are still some legal issues which you have to really have to think about. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Krzysztof.